Hey everybody and welcome to I Should Be Painting. It has been two years since GW released its contrast paint. So today we're going to be talking about myself, the CGN crew, and a few other people's experiences with using contrast paint for the past two years. And at the end of it, I will dub thee my five favorite contrast paints and my five least favorite contrast paints. To start off with, contrast paint has been a game changer for not only myself, but also for Big Aaron, Josh, and Sean, and I know a lot of other people. Contrast paint may not have been a technically new product. Uh, there have been many miniature painters who knew how to make these sort of thick washes for a very long time, but introducing this style of paint to the mass market was definitely revolutionary. And over the past two years, I have find myself integrating contrast paint into my painting schemes a lot more, either by entirely painting models with 100% contrast or having a very significant amount of my models being painted with contrast. On top of that, contrast painting has taken the amount of time that it, that it normally takes for me to paint a model from here off camera and has brought it down to here while not only maintaining or improving the excellence of my miniatures. As you all may know, I finished painting last year the Gene Steeler Colt that was a primarily contrast paint army, although there are plenty of layer paints and even some airbrush paints involved in that. But in general, I have been doing a ton of work with contrast paint. As far as Josh is concerned, he is almost exclusively using contrast paint, maybe with the exceptions of metals and white and black and a few other critical layer paints. He's been painting most of his Marvel Crisis Protocol models with contrast paint, and the results are absolutely fantastic. So, all of these contrast paints were purchased two years ago. It is now two years later. How does contrast paint stand? What's our favorites? What is our least favorites and why? Before I continue, I want to say, first of all, there's a lot of different disagreement. Particular people like some colors, other people dislike other colors, and it was very hard to get any sort of consensus between the people that I talked to in terms of what is the absolute best five paints and what is the absolute worst five paints. With the exception of Ultramarine Blue, which we'll talk about, and Apothecary White, pretty much there was no consensus. In fact, as Josh put it, if I were to remove this one from my top five and remove this one from my bottom five, he would agree with me as a person and allow me to keep on having my own opinions and even maybe even consider them correct. So with that caveat being said, let's just first of all say contrast paint in general, if I had to give the entire line of contrast paint a score, uh, one from 10, 10 being the greatest thing ever, one being complete garbage, don't, don't even buy it, I would give the entire set like a seven or an eight. I mean, it is fantastic. You cannot go wrong with contrast paint. Also, if I were to take all of these contrast paints and I were going to rank them from my least favorite or least used to my most favorite or most used, the difference between number one and number two and even between number five and number one really isn't that great. The bottom line is that all of the browns, right? Like I have Skeleton Horde as kind of like in my top five as my favorite browns, which we'll get into, but really all of the browns, Gregor Brown, Snakebite Leather, Gillum and Flesh, Wildwood, these are all fantastic colors. I mean, you literally could just put them all in the top five, but you can't have a top five if you have more than five. So I've distilled it down to my top five and my bottom five. So let's go ahead and talk about what they are and why. First thing that I needed to do was prep 10 bases so that I could paint my five top and five bottom contrast paints. I know that the contrast paints are 
greatly affected by the color that you are painting over. Obviously the two GW colors that are recommended are Wraithbone and Gracier, although a lot of people use just regular old white. For the purpose of this video, I am gonna be using my preferred color, which is Wraithbone. And honestly, I don't think that's gonna to make too big of a difference in talking about which ones are our favorite and which ones are our least favorite. Whenever I'm spray priming something light that can be pushed by the spray primer itself, I like to use a spray board and some painter's tape. I flip the paint upside down and I stick my objects to it, that way preventing them from getting blown away by your spray can. Ugh, my stupid priming table is still covered in snow and it's still snowing. Gee whiz. Worked like a charm. Actually, I primed it in the bathroom. Okay, here we have our five favorite contrast paints and our five least favorite contrast paints. And once again, these aren't just my opinions. These are the opinions of my friends and a few other people online. I tried to get a sort of poll going on to figure out which colors people like the most and why. And we are going to start with Aethermatic Blue is one of my favorite colors and I used it heavily in my Gene Stealer army and I just feel that it's a it's a really good reliable paint that gives you very nice coverage as well as an excellent and beautiful shade. This is just one of those colors that I really really like. I feel like it adds a lot of magic and mystery to your miniatures and um, I particularly like it on my jean stealers. Next is Ayindan Yellow. Next is Ayindan Yellow. And this is another one of those colors that people just tend to use a lot, including myself. Um, it seems to be a go-to contrast color. It, it doesn't separate too badly. It mixes really easily and it's an extremely versatile yellow. Um, I use it as a wash, sometimes over browns for bags and things like that, but also just in general to cover. Um, and Ayindan Yellow is definitely one of my five favorite contrast colors. Next might be a bit controversial. It's actually Apothecary White. Now, Apothecary White is uh, one of the colors that does have a hard time uh, separating, or I guess it has an easy time separating, and it's kind of hard to get it to mix back together. It requires much vigorous shaking and often stirring but the truth is that it's a really interesting color and it's a fantastic color for priming for making your models look white it's really more like a super light gray but it actually gives the right type of shadows and tonality for a tabletop looking white to come across. Um, if you haven't tried Apothecary White, like if you have Space Marines or Snow or something like this base and you want it to be white and you need a quick way to make it like have a nice shading and come across as bright white, Apothecary White is really nice. You can also, you know, especially over a lighter surface, you can dab off some of the areas that you want to have be, that you want to be even whiter that are highlighted. Um, Apothecary White is just one of those like transformative colors as far as I am concerned, a few of my friends are concerned in the contrast paint line. Next is Achillean Green. This is one of my favorite colors. Uh, it's also one of Josh's favorite colors, I believe. Again, it's really, I don't know if it's more of a blue than it is a green, which I guess could kind of bother people. But this is another one of those go-to vibrant uh, dark colors that has really good coverage. And it's just, it's something that we wind up using a lot. I really like it. It doesn't get all blotchy and weird like uh, the ultramarine blue does, which of course we'll be talking about in our bottom five. And it's just a really, really great color for adding some super awesome deep dark blues to your models. I mean, it's gorgeous. 
Last in our top five is Skeleton Horde, and Skeleton Horde is by far one of the greatest colors. I think that I use Skeleton Horde all the time. I use it almost as much as I use like Nuln Oil or any of the other shades. But the truth is that once you get into the contrast browns, all the way from the darkest brown, which is Wildwood, up to the lightest brown, which is arguably a uh, skeleton horde. The fact is that all the browns are amazing. But everybody that I talked to, they all said skeleton horde is one of their favorite paints and is probably their favorite brown. So even though the truth is that all the browns are kind of, are, are great, the most favored one I could find is Skeleton Horde. And that even comes from Garfi Graham, uh, who makes these. And uh, he knows what he's doing. And he also straight up was just like Skeleton Horde. So that is an easy pick for the top five. And that of course brings us to our bottom five, which is really like, it's hard to, it's really hard to decide what the bottom five are and you know we talked about again we talked about this a little bit earlier but the truth is that all of the contrast paints given the right circumstances the right model the right shapes the right texture are useful now the first five that we looked at we find to be useful across a broad spectrum of different projects and these five tend to be a little bit less useful but that does just because they're the bottom five doesn't mean that they're bad paints and the one that we're going to start with is Dark Angels Green. Now, Dark Angels Green is a nice dark green. Um, it doesn't separate too bad, but it suffers from sort of almost being too dark. It also tends to not mix well with other colors, and it can wind up being pretty blotchy. So... Dark Angels Green, particularly by those friends that play Dark Angels, um, they really don't like the Dark Angels Green, and for one of the reasons is that it really picks up brush marks when you get on those flat surfaces. So it's just like, you have this color for Dark Angels Green, you want to paint your Dark Angels, but as soon as you slap it on the shoulder pads, it doesn't really look that great. So for that purpose, we are putting Dark Angels Green in the bottom five. Next up is Magos Purple. I've used Magos Purple. I've had some pretty good luck with it, but three of the five people that I talked to all put Magos Purple down at the bottom. And part of the reason why is you can kind of see it here. It doesn't have really good coverage. Like it's, it's kind of more like a wash than a paint. And that, to me, looks like something pinkish purple got onto a white wall. Which again, there may be very specific circumstances in which Magos purple is super great, but if you're like, yo, I need this cloak to be purple, Magos purple is not gonna get you where you need to be. Next, unfortunately, is the other purple, and it's Shyish purple. Shyish purple is the darker purple, but it also suffers from that sort of like blotchiness and doesn't give you like that really nice contrast shade colorization that you're looking for. It's almost too blunt. And then on top of that, it really, really, really doesn't mix well with other paints. And it's very unforgiving with the other contrast paints. Like if you try to put another color over it, it just totally dominates it. And if you get this this purple on top of one of your other colors, like your Ayindan yellow or your green, like it's just gonna cover that really bad and cause you a lot of problems. So yeah, it gives you that deeper, darker purple, but it just doesn't have the coverage and its compatibility with the other contrast paints seems to be kind of a problem. Next up is Nasdrag Yellow. Now, Nasdrag Yellow is actually, as you can see, a color that I use a lot, but it was brought to my attention by Garfi Graham, and this is true, um, and I'm gonna put a picture of it up right here that I took. Nasdrag Yellow separates into two very distinct 
paints. There are two chemicals, two solutions in this bottle that do not stay together, that do not like to stay together, and that it winds up not working. You can actually probably see it on camera right now. There is a dark, dark top and a really light bottom. And even when you shake it up, it just never seems to quite work well. And because it's not what we would call shelf stable, Garfi and I both agree that of the yellows and the browns, the Nasdrag is not only probably the worst, but it doesn't even come in like, like there's so many other browns and yellows to pick from. Like there's no reason to grab this one. This one is definitely the bottom five. It is not shelf stable. And last up is ultramarine blue. And ultramarine blue has this mixing problem as well. You can see that the bottom is, is like white and I've been shaking this vigorously and I'm still just not getting that color in it. And it's just as problematic as the dark angels. The thing is, we want ultramarine blue to be great because ultramarines are awesome and they're the most commonly played army and they're also the introductory army so you would expect ultramarine blue to work the best. But this also suffers from the same problem that it works really, really bad on flat surfaces and the last time I checked, space marines have flat surfaces and I'm still shaking it and my goodness, it's just not recompiling like come on um, I'm just gonna have to use it you know what I mean in this state um, now I the first thing that I tried to paint was like a cool suit of armor that I thought would be really fun but it just it just wasn't good so not only does it not mix properly but boy oh boy look at it when I'm putting it down like it just look at these brush strokes in it it's it's barely blue um, yeah, this is by far, like, I think that ultramarine blue is the only, the only contrast color that I would say just skip, <laughs> just straight up skip it. It is just, it just does not work. Otherwise, in general, even our, our other bottom four are still pretty good paints. And when you get into the browns, of which Nasdrag yellow is kind of one of those colors, uh, they're all super good. Now, every contrast paint has its use. There's always ways to use it. I'm sure you're gonna say like, hey, I've used this paint, I've been able to do that. These are just the opinions of some of the Cool Guys Nation's uh, team, Josh, Big Aaron, myself, and Sean. I also contacted a couple people on some forums, as well as talked to Garfi Graham, and this is what I come up with as the top five contrast paints and the bottom five contrast paints. So once again, top five, Aethermatic Blue, Ayindan Yellow, Apothecary White, Achillean Green, Skeleton Horde, in the bottom five, Blood Angels Green, Magos Purple, Shyish Purple, Nasdrag Yellow, and Ultramarine Blue. And of all of the contrast paints, who I would all, in general, like if you just had to ask me to give a score, the lowest score I'd give a contrast paint is like a seven because they're all pretty useful with the exception of ultramarine blue. That's the only one that I think is actually truly a bad paint. Otherwise, the entire contrast line of paint is my favorite line of paint. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, it is time to go to the computer and we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently this week. I do not have specific projects for you this week. I thought this week, instead of sharing specific projects, I'm going to share some of my favorite Facebook groups, which is where I find these projects, so that you yourself can go peruse the internet and find your own inspiration. And we will be back next week with new projects from new people uh, for us all to admire and enjoy. Okay, this has been a pretty long video, so let's keep this section on the shorter side. Three of my favorite Facebook groups for finding projects that are inspirational to me are number one, the Marvel Crisis Protocol group. Obviously, Josh and I like Marvel Crisis Protocol, and if you want to see miniatures related to Marvel Crisis Protocol, then I suggest you check out the group by Atomic Mass Games, Marvel Crisis Protocol. 
Next up is Games Workshop Army Painters. I find this page to have a lot, a lot of inspirational posts. It has a really great community with over 45,000 members. It is a private group. You have to answer some questions. I'm sure you'll be able to answer those questions just fine, so long as you're not a Russian bot. And then you can post and see all of the most amazing Warhammer 40K armies that you could possibly imagine. And lastly, more recently for me, the Star Wars Cosplayers group has been pretty freaking cool. As you can see, this one also has a pretty large audience of about 16,000 people. I've been working on my own custom Sith costume, and I have been um, really, really happy with the people in this group. They've been very friendly, they've been very helpful, and it's just one of those things that if you like Star Wars and you like cosplay, hey! check out the Star Wars Cosplayers group, not only to see cool Star Wars cosplay, but also to get yourself some inspiration. Remember to like and subscribe, hit that bell button so you never miss an update. If you wanna take your patronage to the next level, check out our Patreon in the notes below. Always don't forget, we have a hobby chat every Sunday night at 8.30 Central Standard Time. We encourage you not only to join us, but also to do your own hobbying. If you wanna check out our Discord, there's a link for that as well. Uh, you can get special Discord privileges if you join our Patreon, but you can also just join our Discord and chill there and hang out with us. And as always, this has been Aaron from Cool Guys Nation, and we'll see you on the table.